it is extremely tough job to teach without students sitting in front good evening to all of you so we were discussing herbert simon <coughs> okay let us conclude herbert simon uh, today uh, so let me give you a small uh, overview of what we have discussed yesterday on herbert simon so with regard to the herbert simon uh, to begin with uh, uh, we discussed his uh, criticism to the classical theories of organization and uh, subsequent to that we maintained that simon's theory of administration is all about his theory of decision making he moreover believed that administration is a complex network of decision making that means in administration each activity is nothing but a choice so choice is nothing but making a choice is nothing but decisions so administration thereby a complex network of decision making simon uh, did also emphasize on science of administration but he raised certain concern with regard to the science of administration because uh, simon while discussing his idea on science of administration challenged the classical theories and their view on science of administration classical theory who developed the idea of science of administration based on a dichotomized view of politics from administration the the classical theorists believed that administration being fact will be amenable to science when it is divorced from politics the politics is value so if the politics is intermixed with administration then there is a problem of developing science of administration but classical theory intended to uh, separate the administration from politics so thereby okay, they maintained that when administration is separated from politics administration is fact so fact is amenable to scientific investigation scientific studies and thereby <coughs> possible no? thereby it is possible to develop reliable or moreover we can say consistent and reliable generalizations or principles <coughs> simon rejected this view because simon believed the whole of the administration is not fact because simon while dismissing politics administration dichotomy introduced fact value dichotomy he in fact uh, believed that every decision carries within it both the goal component as well as the means component and in this the goal component carries more over the ethical premises or value premises and the means component carries more over the factual premises in ethical premise that the goal the value predominates and uh, if you take into account the the factual premise the fact predominates so in administration since administration is a complex set of decisions complex network of decisions and decisions carries both fact as well as value simon maintained in administration there exist both fact as well as value so that in that particular context simon says it is a challenge to develop science of administration because the administration carries also value value compromises value undermines scientism so there lies that that's what simon says that there lies the difficulty in developing science of administration that means as per simon the administration is not amenable to scientism as physics would be or for that matter chemistry would be because in administration there is value component and value is going to undermine the scientism of administration but having said so he maintained as far as the study is concerned in the in terms of the study of the administration is concerned the focus has to be only on which which component the fact the fo focus has to be on 
fact component that the factual premise not the ethical component or the value premise ek ek in this uh, simon says that uh, uh, the the science of administration is possible but the it is not possible in the same way with the same status as it is there in let's say physical science or for that matter some of the applied sciences like let's say astronomy so this science of administration the scientism will be somewhat limited because there is a value component it is very much present but having said so he says that there could be two types of two two major aspect to the science of administration one is the pure science and other is the practical science the pure science okay, basically can okay, refers to okay, undertaking okay, empirical studies and also to develop you no know, help, helping to conduct you no know, undertaking more or we can say empirical studies in order to develop knowledge you no know, principles and theories the practical science more over deals with the studies with an aim to uh, provide prescriptions or the recommendations you know for better administration so the, the the science of administration will have these two major aspect one is the pure science other is the practical science pure science simply studying you know, empirically you know, and developing theories principles knowledge building you know, developing concepts ideas that will be useful ultimately in practical science itself so practical science more over will deal with into the the idea of providing prescription systematically studying and providing prescriptions for bettering the administration or bring about improve in the improvement in the administration that's the practical science but at the same time if you try to understand the simonian view on administration simon would say that administration more over the, the 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 focus on addressing the issue in administration is all about understanding or more over dealing with decisions so in this particular context the issue of efficiency in administration for simon is all about efficiency in making decisions so how efficiently decisions are made that is what will pro- uh, determine how efficient is the administration so in that particular context the 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 the, the question thereby is all about the rationality in decision making because rationality means the the appropriateness of the means that is whatever decision is taken with regard to the goal that is aimed at or that is meant to be attained so rationality is a key character in administration because rationality in decision making will bring about the efficiency in decision making or will result into attainment of the desired goals and that is what will provide or determine the success of the administration so if you try to understand from simonian point of view simon would say that efficiency in administration is more over the a, a question of okay you no know, maintaining rationality in decision making but he, he he simply says you see if you take into account in actual uh, okay, 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 world of administration in reality it is very difficult uh, to maintain that rationality or simply you would say that uh, see individuals in the administration they are intendedly intendedly rational intendedly rational means they intend to be rational but they will never be able to uh, attain that very complete rationality because human being is incomplete and imperfect on number of account they have limitation in terms of their physical capacity intellectual capacity maybe in terms of they carry biases or whatever that might be that compromises what their ability to become rational so individuals within the organization are intendedly rational so when we use the term intendedly rational what does that mean that means there is a limitation with regard to the rationality of the individual within the organization do write these terms because uh, as i remember yesterday uh, i possibly did not use this uh, use this term 
So uh, Simon maintains that as far as the uh, individuals in the administration is concerned, okay, they uh, would be intendedly rational. That means the, the individuals within the organization would suffer from number of limitations with regard to their capacity to be rational. So they, they would be incomplete and imperfect because of number of reasons. Although they will aim towards making rational decisions. So although they will be aiming towards making rational decisions, but still there will be number of imperfection and that will be number of uh, what you say, uh, that will be incompleteness uh, in them, in their capacity, whereby their ability to be rational will get compromised. That is what is being referred here as intendedly rational. So Simon thereby has rejected the classical uh, uh, theories of organization and their idea of rationality. Because classical theories of organization, they in fact developed, uh, their theories developed or their approach is based on which concept of rationality? Absolute rationality. Complete rationality, absolute rationality. But Simon rejects that, believed that there are limitations and since there are limitations, so within the organization, in reality, there is only limitation, limited an individual can uh, uh, go about uh, or uh, operate within limited rationality or what he refers to as bounded rationality. So thereby if you take into account Simon, Simon moreover would say that administrative questions of efficiency is ultimately a question of solving the problem of rationality within the organization or rationality in decision making within the organization. So ultimately, the main question that is to be addressed with regard to the administration, okay, okay, uh, efficiency in administration is all about what? Addressing the question of rationality in decision making. So in order to explain his idea of bounded rationality, he has developed certain models of man. What are the models of man that we discussed? Three models, though he has also discussed uh, a, a psychological men, but as per this requirement, uh, the relevant models are economic man, social man, and third is administrative man. These are the three different models he developed. In fact, administrative man model to explain descriptively the actual reality within the administration and also providing inherently a prescription that what is not only possible but what is possibly desirable. Okay. So we have discussed till this. Okay. Now before I discuss the rest of his theory, let me clarify one doubt one of your friend had. I can see in Chester Bernard, uh, look, just let me clarify that and we'll come back because the uh, question was raised. Uh, Chester Bernard, while discussing his idea on responsibility, he maintains that individuals within the organization, while carrying out their responsibilities, are not merely guided by only one code because generally if you are an officer of uh, the organization you are an employee in an organization we think that as far as the responsibility is concerned there are laws rules and regulations so organization has already defined what is the job of this particular position the occupant of that position is going to perform that those responsibilities so generally the idea that is carried and what has been emphasized by the classical theories is that individual is always guided within the organization by the legal code law but bernard says in reality it is not true 
in reality the human being like let's say as bernard will say or foley will say that a human being within the organization the bernard will say human being within the organization is not a partial being rather a unique complete human being so you as a human being when you become a member of the government of india it's not that back at home you have a different character and in the office you have a different character it's not possible you might take up certain responsibility of being an officer of the state which you might tend to set it aside while being at house while being in neighborhood but again you are the same human being so your social values your cultural values your economic attitude your political orientation number of these things your passion your emotion your religious okay, values your moral character number of these things that comprise you all these are going to be imported into what the organization unlike the classical theory classical theory says keep everything out and only come inside with the skill that you have and that is what we require bernard says no everything comes the whole package comes although for the purpose of the organizational job individual adapts certain character acquire certain skill but that doesn't mean that human being takes away while being in the organization something like a switch on and switch off moment in the office switch on only organizational man moment moving out all those different values come in no the same human being if that human being is a kadus that character is carried into the organization if that human being is let's say a very pleasing personality hasmukh that is also carried within the organization if that individual is somewhat friendly in general by nature that is also carried into the organization if that individual is morally very sound that is also carried into the organization if that individual is very moral that is also carried into the organization so the human being is unique and complete as per bernard no that is why he says in that position individual thereby is not merely guided by only one code that is a legal code rather guided by multiple codes multiple code means he might be a doctor so doctor professional code apart from the uh, legal code of that organization moral codes religious codes cultural codes so number of this different code uh, 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 guide the human being while performing within the organization that is what is the multiple code guiding the individual while performing the responsibility okay anyway now let's take up the rest of herbert simon see simon while referring to decision making he maintains that decision making is not an one shot activity it's not a single activity or it is not an one shot activity rather it is a process it is not an one shot activity instead it is a process in order to elaborate the process of decision making he has divided it into to begin with three phases although he added a fourth phase to his categorization those phases being so to begin with he has uh, developed how many stages of decision making three to begin with intelligence stage design stage and choice stage although later on he added one more that is feedback
intelligence, design, choice and feedback. Intelligence basically refers to the first stage in decision making process where the problem or the issue is identified and relevant data and information with that regard is collected.